Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, today I'm going to be talking about the Kai Rotary Cutter, Bland Art Fabrics, the book review will be for quilted wall hangings, I'll be demonstrating how to use staples to finish a bag, and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness, thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday. During that intro, that felt really good to say um, Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat, because we're back every Sunday now, so I'm really excited about that. I see Susan's watching from Tasmania, Sally and Katerina's watching from South Florida, so thank you everyone so much for joining me for Social Sunday. Um, I'm really excited for tonight's show, um, and also I have a fun, um, I guess, surprise for next Sunday's show. My mom and dad have agreed to be uh, live on camera with me for Social Sunday next Sunday, so I figured I'd just say it live on the show to kind of lock them in so they can't get out of it this time. So um, I, I guess we'll chat a little bit <laughs> before, uh, at the beginning of the show next Sunday, I'll be talking to my mom and dad, I'll be answering some questions. My mom does so, my dad does not. So um, yeah, we'll see how it goes, um, and I'm very excited about that. Um, a couple things before we get started with the notion of the week, my favorite portion of the show. Uh, the Minikins challenge for the month of November is the Kanga supply roll. So this is what that looks like. It's from Minikins season two. Violet's always trying to steal this from me. It's got these four zippered sections with clear vinyl, and these are four separate sections. So you can keep uh, jewelry, sewing notions, um, cosmetics, what have you, and it has uh, a little hook in case you'd like to hang it in the bathroom, in your sewing room, and it secures with uh, two magnetic snaps on the front. So one of my favorite projects from Minikin Season 2. Um, the link to that challenge is in the description, so in case you have made this project in the last year or you plan on making it sometime in the month of no November, check that link in the description and it'll take you to my blog post for the challenge. Um, I admit, I know not all parts of the world uh, utilize daylight savings, but we do here in Chicago, and so um, the time normally is 7 p.m., but now it feels like 8 p.m. because we set the clocks back um, an hour. So I'm kind of feeling it. I told Danny, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm dragging a little bit. Hopefully I'll perk up when the show starts, and that did happen. Um, I know Violet already went up to bed, so uh, it's pretty close to our bedtime. Um, Everything that I talk about during Social Sunday, in case you're new around here, um, are things that I purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I wanted to share with you. And also everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the books, fabrics, projects, or notions that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So. The notion of the week is, um, because I seem to be a collector of tools, this Kai Rotary Cutter that I just picked up. So the reason that I wanted to try this particular tool out is because I use the Kai scissors and I just wanted to see if it was better or the same as the rotary cutters that I already had. So I'm going to jump over to the side camera and show you what this little tool is all about. Alright, so if you're a quilter, you're probably very familiar with your rotary cutter. This is the rotary cutter that I had previously. It's uh, made by Olfa, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, when you want to use the blade, you just push the section down. This plastic part comes down and it reveals the blade so that you can cut your fabric. And then when you're done, you just push it back up and it makes it safe to keep in your sewing room so that um, other family members don't accidentally cut themselves with your rotary cutter because they're very sharp. The Kai rotary cutter, when I got it, uh, I turned it over to the back. So there's a setting for um, lighter weight fabrics or heavy duty fabrics that you can click or if you want to lock it in place, meaning the blade can't be exposed, uh, you just push it uh, toward the middle. Let me see. There we go. Um, so that's locked. So. There weren't really any directions in the particular packet that I got, so when I got it, I was like, well, how do I cut with it? Because I couldn't figure out. There wasn't a button to pull anything down, and I just wasn't sure, and finally Dan Danny set me straight. For this particular rotary cutter, as soon as you press down, the blade's exposed. Uh, I don't want to cut my fingers, but this this plastic piece, once it, it gets pushed against your cutting mat, 
it expo exposes the blade. So I thought that was pretty handy. As soon as you're done cutting, the plastic piece goes back in place and protects the blade. So I thought it was pretty handy. Every time you cut it, it, it uh, the safety portion, this plastic piece comes back up. So I personally didn't feel, I mean, it's a relatively new cutter to me. I didn't feel that it cut better than the Ulfa, but I liked this particular feature. So um, if you don't already have a rotary cutter, perhaps take a look at the Kai. Um, I, I seem to be, like I said, a collector of tools. So I have many scissors, you know, now I have several rotary cutters, all sorts of different things. Um, if you've not seen me talk about my Kai scissors before, I, I often get questions about what model number Kai scissors I use. I use model number 7205. They're super sharp. I like that they feel relatively lightweight in my hands and I like these rubber grips over here. So it just feels nice and comfortable. Um, and again, this is that Kai rotary cutter. Okay, so I have a question for me. Let me know the answer to this question. Do you use a rotary cutter for bag making? Um, I admit I am a bit manual with cutting out my pattern pieces and fabric and interfacing. So I personally like to use friction pens, tracer on my pattern pieces, or if I'm cutting out squares or rectangles, um, I just use my ruler again with the friction pen, mark off my pieces, and I cut with scissors. Same thing with the interfacing. Um, although with interfacing, it's often quicker. I find if I have all my fabric pieces cut out first and then I often will lay the fabric on top of the interfacing to cut it out. Um, that's just my personal uh, preference, I know, but I know using the rotary cutter makes things a lot quicker, especially if you're dealing with squares or rectangles. So I haven't done any sewing this past week, uh, been doing a lot of behind the scenes work on the computer, but I wanted to show you this paint by number that I've been working on. I got one for myself and for Violet, and sometimes before dinner we work on this, and it's rather a large project, so it'll probably take me at least a month to finish, but not sewing related, but I just thought I'd share it with you because it's uh, kind of creative related. Uh, the paint by numbers, obviously mine is a horse. Uh, it came in this nifty box with a handle, so uh, when I'm not working on it, I store it in the box to keep it nice and neat. and. Um, free since I'm working on the kitchen table often free from spilling things on it if I keep it in that box um, I'm gonna try to I guess I'll show you quickly in the front camera what my progress is so far and then maybe I'll jump over to the side camera to show you so you can see it a bit more close up so this is my my progress on my paint by number so far I've just been working on I started with the darkest colors first which for mine was blue and um, I'm working up to the lightest color so that I can kind of layer the color. So I've just got my background done so far. Uh, let me pop over to the side camera and show you uh, what all came in my kit. All right, so here's my paint by number. Obviously you can see all the different um, numbers. The other items that come in the kit are uh, like a full color photograph of what your project should look like when it's finished. I also saved this uh, piece that came with it just in case I get to a, a point later on and I can't see what the numbers are. This printout has all the numbers on it just in case I need to reference it. And also I keep all of my um, paints in a Ziploc bag and all the paints are numbered. It came with four brushes and it also came with um, tools to uh, hang it on the wall and also tools to um, not varnish. Um, no, Danny, Danny Shellac is closer. See all the finished uh, painting before I paint it on the wall. But I thought it was a little bit different than other paint by numbers I've seen in the past because it is canvas. So it's, it's actually mounted on uh, wood. I think you can probably see the wood back there. So um, I thought it was really cool. They had lots of different options for different animals, uh, landscapes, all sorts of different things. And I thought it was just something um, kind of original that when I'm finished, I could mount on the wall and have it in the sewing room. So uh, just a little bit something I've been working on and it's fun to work on it with Violet. Violet has a different, uh, she has also a horse canvas, but hers looks a little different than mine. Just something fun that we can do together. So let's get back over to the sewing related content. Fabric that I've added to my stash this week is really cool prints. Um, the fabric line is called Land Art and the designer is Odile. Uh, I believe she's a French designer. So let me pop back over to the side camera and show you what those fabrics look like. So I didn't purchase the entire fabric line. I just purchased what I thought would be 
nice for making bags because I do like using large scale prints. So I purchased four different pieces of fabric. So this is the main print and it has all these woodland creatures on it with really fun bright backgrounds. And it comes in two different colors and two different sizes of, of the prints. So that was the red and this one is a lovely kind of navy and teal. So really cute animals. I like that the animals have the floral designs on them also. Really cute. And then the larger scale prints, these, the animals on the large scale prints are quite large. So let me open this up a little bit so you can see it. So as you can see, that deer is huge. So there's my hand, just so you get an idea of how big the deer is. Chipmunk, super cute. And I, I just really love the designs on this fabric. So I thought the big print would be really great for uh, perhaps a coalition bag. I think that would look really, really interesting. So here's the other colorway again with the larger print. All the animals are on it, just larger scale this time. And I picked up an older fabric from the same designer. I just liked this particular uh, floral print. Um, the fabric line is called Confetti's by the same fabric designer. I just really liked the, in particular, the pops of blue were really interesting to me. So um, again, these were designed by Unfortunately, I didn't want to butcher the artist's last name, but that's her full name right there. And both fabric lines were produced by Free Spirit Fabrics. And the link is in the description where I purchased mine. Um, I purchased those particular fabrics from Material Girl over on Etsy. So I have another question for you. Where you live, which wild animal is most common in your area? So even though we live in Chicago, we live, our neighborhood is right across the street from a forest preserve. So uh, we do actually often see tons of deer in the forest. We get a lot of skunks and possum in the area. Skunks, we can obviously tell when we, when we smell them. Um, in our yard, we do have um, our yard bunny. Whenever we see him, because we, we always have tons of carrots, we have a carrot drawer in our fridge. The carrot drawer is mostly for the horses, but also for our yard bunny. So uh, when Violet or William see the, our yard bunny, they take a carrot out, break it up into smaller pieces, and throw it out for him. He's lived in our yard since he was a baby. <laughs> um, I see a quick uh, question. Sarah, can you mention the name of the scissor sharpening company that you mail your scissors to? Great question. Um, I think it was earlier this year I reviewed a company that I sent my scissors to to be sharpened. And the website is simplysharper.com. Basically, you mail your scissors to the company and then they send them back sharpened. Um, you can also send them knives and, and other items. Um, they have locations in Wisconsin and Texas, I believe. So since I live in Chicago, I sent mine to, to Wisconsin and I found that the turnaround time was pretty quick and the scissors were very sharp when they came back. So I was very pleased with that. Again, the website is simplysharper.com. Danny and I last night went to a comedy show in Chicago. Um, it was at, uh, it was sort of like a stadium show. So it was at the United Center, which is where the Chicago Bulls and the Chicago Blackhawks play. So it was a big show. The comedian was Sebastian Maniscalco. Danny's going to put a picture on the screen of us at the show. So there's me and Danny at the show. It was kind of a late show. So it was at nine o'clock at night. So by the time we got home, I think it was a little bit after midnight. So a late night, I'm not used to staying up that late, but it was a lot of fun. I really like seeing both stand-up comedians and also um, uh, in Chicago we have Second City which is sort of like comedy skits like Saturday similar to Saturday Night Live so we enjoy going to both of those types of venues it's a lot of fun and uh, uh, ha we haven't had date night in a while so it was a lot, a lot of fun getting to spend some time together at the show. Um, my book review for this week is kind of a slim book that I picked up but it's called quilted wall hanging. So I'm going to show you some of the projects in the book and what drew my eye to this particular book is I liked the idea of quilted wall hangings because uh, quicker projects and also having something nice to decorate the walls in your sewing area. So let me pop over to the side camera and show you the projects in the book. Okay so there's 11 projects and I like the fact you can probably already see by the cover some of them are non-traditional quilty looking wall hangings, meaning not like it's just a regular square rectangle. This actually has pieces sticking out from the sides, which I thought was pretty cool. So everything's really quick and easy to put together. 
Um, this one features some raw edge applique on it. This is the first project in the book. And again, as with most quilting and sewing books, instructions are at the beginning for um, just general quilt making instructions. Um, and I found that the projects uh, were a range of skill level. Like for instance, this is probably one of the easier projects in the book, geometric plaid. And here's another one, Adventure Awaits. I really like the white background, so much white, and then just the pop of color in the middle. I found a few of them, of the projects in this book that I wanted to make. Here's another one. And this one was the one that was on the cover. This one's called Modern Mountain. So as you can probably gather from looking at it, this, this one will go together really quick because it's just a few squares. Here's another one with a, a few more colors in it, mosaic. And this one is another of my favorites. This one is actually not a continuous quilt. So this is strips of the quilts that were assembled on sort of like a wooden dowel. Let me try to get the glare off the book, but I thought this was really cool for maybe a living room. And here's one where you can use jelly roll strips in. Another kind of thinking out of the box wall hanging. This one's called Dreamcatcher, and I love how they use an embroidery hoop and some yarn just to make it look like a more of a creative Dreamcatcher. This quilt is called Staggered. I suppose that could be a wall hanging or um, a baby quilt. I love this one also. I like the the rounded corners on this quilt and the quilt block in the middle, so to speak. And the, the last portion of the book is just finishing up your quilt, quilted wall hanging. So again, this is called Quilted Wall Hangings. Each pattern was designed by a different designer. And I just thought it was something, like I said, uh, a little bit different and something not so time intensive, like a quick project that you could finish in some of your favorite fabrics and hang it on your sewing room wall or your sewing area wall. Um, getting over to Danny's favorite part of the show now, I'd like to invite all the bag ladies and bag dudes to stand proud and let us know. So let me know if you're a bag, bag lady or bag dude. I'm certainly a proud bag lady and thank you so much for being part of our community and I love that everyone always has something kind and supportive to say either in the chat during the show or if you're a member of the Facebook group in the group. If you're not already a member of the Facebook group, I have a link in the description in case you'd like to join. And we also have different groups by state or country. So uh, we'd like to invite you to, to join those as well as some of the groups have, um, have or will have meetups in the future where you can meet some other like-minded sewists in person. And uh, we really love seeing the photos, especially from the meetups of people connecting in person. All right, so I had a question this past week from Beverly and she mentioned, let me grab a piece of fabric really quick. She mentioned she was struggling with her sewing machine when she was finishing up a bag. Um, if your uh, bag has a flap at the top or some form of bag where you need to sew the top edge of the bag, the exterior and the lining right sides together, those layers can kind of get on the thick side when you're adding all of the fabric and interfacing together. And she mentioned she was getting a bit of um, her sewing machine slipping off the edge of the fabric and perhaps not catching both the lining and the exterior fabrics and leaving an occasional gap or a hole. And so I wanted to show you, um, I've heard of the people using this method in the past, but I've not tried it myself before today. But this method is for using staples to hold the layers of your fabric before you get them under the sewing machine. So I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and show you my little prepared sample and how I use staples for this. Okay, so before the show, I prepared an exterior bag. So this is a, a bag on the simple side. So I've got my exterior fabric attached to uh, foam interfacing and I sewed the sides and the bottom and I did the same thing for my lining fabric. Um, the lining's attached to ShapeFlex interfacing. So I turned my exterior fabric right side facing out and I'm going to go ahead and slip it inside my lining so that the fabrics are right sides together. So in the past I, I've used wonder clips for this particular aspect of bag making, basically finishing the bag up. So 
what you can do is either add tons of wonder clips and hope that they kind of hold in place while your sewing machine is getting through sewing the top area of the bag right sides together. I found that worked for me pretty well in the past, but I also, like Beverly, have noticed I've gotten some slippage, slippage of my own. This method will also work for if you're sewing your um, exterior side panel to the front and back of your bag, you can do the same thing with the staples here. So if you're finding the wonder clips are not holding fast for you and kind of slipping in place, you can use some staples. So I put a few on the back side over here before the show and I'm going to actually staple some live on camera. So I'm for sewing my bag together along the top edge of the bag, I'm going to be using half inch seam allowance. So you want to make sure that your staples fall within the seam allowance. I've marked it here just for the demonstration portion of this show, but you can mark it on your fabric as well if you feel more comfortable. So this is a half inch seam allowance, allowance which means I will be sewing on top of the line because that's the half inch. So you want to keep your staples a little bit above the halfway point um, because we want to keep it away from the needle. Certainly you don't want to be sewing over any staples. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and take, this is just a regular stapler and you can staple the staples as close as you feel that you need them. So if you want to staple them every half inch or whatever you feel comfortable with is totally fine. And this helps a little bit better than Wonder Clips because the staples obviously are not going to shift. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over. You can see the staples right there. I prepared this little portion before the show. As you can see, I've got the staples over here. I've got my stitches right over here on the line. And so in theory, you'll be sewing around the entire outer edge of the bag. I don't have my sewing machine up on the counter for the live shows, but after you've stitched all the way around the bag, you're just gonna cut the seam allowance approximately in half. So in theory, you'll be removing those zippers. So it's a good um, habit to, if you're using a half inch seam for finishing up your bag to trim the seam allowance in half to, so to about a quarter of an inch anyway. So when you're trimming those seam allowances in half, you'll be removing those staples. So the staples will not be left in the finished bag. And then you'll have, uh, a nice finished top edge of the bag without any gaps because the staples held everything in place. So hopefully that makes sense. Obviously this is a very simplistic um, bag. I didn't want to go ahead and sew an entire um, Polaris bag or anything like that, but I, th I think you get the idea with the staples. And again, they're easily removable. You don't even have to remove them with a staple remover like I just showed. You just cut them out by trimming the seam allowance in half and as long as you have place the staples um, so that you can do that, so not too close to the seam allowance, then it'll be really quick and easy. And this is great for other areas of the bags, like I mentioned. For example, when you're sewing your side panel, especially if it's a curved side panel to the front and back of your bag, sometimes that curved area, even with the wonder clips, tends to kind of slip away for, from you or the fabrics kind of uh, are not aligned as they should be. So the staples would definitely help with that. So thank you so much for to Beverly for asking that question. So uh, we have an, a giveaway at the end of the show. Um, before we get over to the giveaway, I wanted to let you know I'll be answering some questions live. So if you have a question for me, go ahead and type your question in the comments right now on either Facebook or YouTube. I'll answer as many questions as I can live. So it can either be a bag making related question, a question about a notion or tool, or a general sewing question. All those questions are fine and Danny's gonna be checking the comments for the questions to put some of those on the screen. Last week's winner of the giveaway was Jen Bellingham. So congratulations to you, Jen. I've already contacted you via social media and just waiting to hear back from you so that we can get you out your prize. Congratulations again. And that winner was Jen Bellingham. All right, so Danny's quick with the draw on the questions. Katerina says, so the staples won't damage the fabric. Um, I, I feel like it's kind of almost like when you're removing stitches with your seam ripper. They do make holes, but um, the, the staples can be removed, uh, like I said, either by cutting them out uh, of the seam allowance or um, I actually just removed this one just right now just by pushing it with my finger. So uh, the staples do leave really small markings in the fabric, but it's similar in size to markings that removing stitches would leave. So I, I 
would definitely feel pretty comfortable about using this on an actual bag that I'm making. Although if you are unsure about it, you can always test on a little scrap of fabric and interfacing, kind of like what I did with that demonstration. Rolanda said, nice trick, it does help. I always, um, let's see, I always wonder why there was never a thread stapler. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, it was really quick and easy, and I think most people have a stapler already in their household. Candy said, have you thought about taking one of your minikin patterns from SVG to your Cricut to the sewing machine start to finish as a tutorial? Um, that's a good question. So I have had a few requests regarding the SVG files in some form of a tutorial. I guess I've hesitated on that in the past just because there are so many different brands and models of electric cutters out there. So I have the Cricut Maker, but I know there's um, the Brother, Scan and Cut, the Silhouette. There's a whole plethora of different machines. So I guess that was my hesitation, um, knowing that if I was demonstrating from my machine, the machine that you have might look a little different and the, the steps according to uh, getting things cut out might be a little different, but I guess I'll consider it for the future. I guess I'd have to think about that, to be honest. Betty says, will the staples work for the day trip cell phone wallet, especially the final step? Um, I don't see why not. You may need to make a few adjustments though because I believe most of the seam allowances in the day trip cell phone wallet are a quarter of an inch and that'll give you less room to get those staples put in. That demonstration that I just showed you was for a half inch seam allowance so I had a lot more room um, to not only staple my staples but to cut them out afterwards. But um, if you're being careful, I don't see why that wouldn't work with a smaller seam allowance as well. Shannon says, Sarah, would you please consider ordering rainbow colored zipper pulls to go with your new zipper? So great question. We do have rainbow pulls and more nickel pulls coming, nickel or silver pulls coming in different shapes than we already have them and in both of the two colors. I think I have, I'm trying to remember what I ordered. I have little heart pulls coming, Mickey Mouse heads, like the little outline of Mickey Mickey's head, uh, flowers. What else did I order? I ordered a few different shapes and all for the number five pulls. And I we do have more of the number five zippered by the yard tape coming soon because honestly we're sold out of most of the colors. So we have um, a new zipper tape coming as well with kind of like an iridescent rainbow, like a continuous rainbow um, metallic looking chain. So we should hopefully have those um, maybe by next week. So uh, we'll list those on the website as soon as we get them and I'll let you know on the live shows as soon as we have them as well. Karen says, what is your favorite holiday item to sew? That's a great question. When my kids were younger, I made them stockings, but um, I think I, I think I should have made a, a better choice when making their stockings because I remember when they were little, I chose fabric that they liked at the time. So I made my daughter one with, uh, I think it was Hello Kitty and Princesses on it and my son with superhero, like Marvel superheroes. And they currently like different things than Hello Kitty, Princesses and superheroes. So I probably should have chosen more of a, not a neutral type of fabric, but maybe just solids like reds and greens or something like that. Um, so I think I probably should be making them updated Halloween, uh, Halloween Christmas stockings this year. Sorry. Um, other holiday items to sew. Baby quilts are really fun to sew as well because they're smaller and quicker. Um, before my brother had his daughter, I made her a paper piece baby quilt and it was tons of fun and it didn't take all that long because it was a smaller quilt. So those are probably my two most favorite events to sew for. Uh, to confirm, no Tuesday shows. Uh, yes, uh, that's true. Uh, no Tuesday shows. We did do Tuesday shows earlier in the year. I admit it was just a, a little bit too much doing two live shows a week, but we are doing Sunday shows every Sunday now. So the first and the third Sunday generally will be the full out social Sunday show that you're used to with the, the notion reviews, the book reviews, all that. And we're going to try to fill in the Sundays in between with um, a variety of formats. So some weeks we'll have Danny joining me on the show. Uh, we'll just be chatting and answering questions from you guys live. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, my mom and dad will be joining me next Sunday on the show. So we're going to try to change it up a little bit, but rest assured the first and the third Sunday, we'll still be doing the full out social Sunday with all of the reviews. 
Laura says, Sarah, I'm making the coalition bag. I need to make the bottom very stiff for traveling. What do you suggest for interfacing? I will be using cork. Also, should I make a false bottom for more support? Thank you. So um, I've made several of the coalition bags, uh, the duffel size version, which is the really large version of that bag. Um, I do like a false bottom in that particular bag. Lately, I've been making false bottoms with corrugated plastic, which if you're in the United States, you can find corrugated plastic in the school supply section where the poster boards are. If you have a Michael store near you, I'm not sure um, as far as availability for the rest of the world, but I have seen corrugated plastic on um, Amazon and it just comes in big sheets and you can cut it up to the size that you need. So that's great for false bottoms. Um, some people like to use um, acrylic, which you can purchase from the hardware store and have cut down. Um, that's okay for a false bottom as well, but I feel like the corrugated plastic is a little bit uh, cheaper and easier. Um, if worse comes to worse, you can also use uh, Peltex interfacing for either just your exterior, um, the bottom of the bag, or um, the, bot the exterior and the lining. Um, you can also try using the Peltex in the false bottom sleeve, but I feel like the corrugated plastic is a little bit stiffer and firmer. Lori says, I would like to make about 20 or so small gifts of appreciation for a rehearsal dinner. What simple bag or pouch would you recommend for a number like this and to someone who needs a simple sew? So I feel like the, let me see if I have it behind me. I feel like based on things that I've seen in our Facebook group, based on finished photos and comments, um, the persimmon dumpling pouch might be the fastest and requiring the least amount of items to make it. So you just need a zipper. It comes in three different sizes. And if you don't want to make it patchwork, uh, obviously it'll be quicker if you just make it in a solid fabric. I have like an accent fabric on the bottom of mine, but if you'd like to, you can make the whole entire thing out of just one fabric. So you'll just have your exterior and lining fabric and your zipper. Um, yeah, this is a really quick sew and maybe what you're looking for for the rehearsal dinner. I'm trying to think what else is just as quick. Uh, maybe the Windsor pouch also. Those are both free patterns with videos and you can find those either on my website or on the YouTube channel. The Windsor, I don't have it in the sewing room right now, but it's a box pouch and I made mine with uh, a pretty lace zipper on it. Pat says, will the staple catch on the feed dogs? So when I was sewing my sample earlier, um, my stapled area was not, uh, getting in trouble with my sewing machine at all or my presser foot. Um, but you may wanna test it out with your machine because your machine might be a little different than mine based on what you have at home. It's always a good idea when you're trying a new technique to just test it out on a little scrap of fabric so you can get your, you know, cut a little square of exterior fabric, attach it to foam, get a little scrap of your lining fabric, attach it to shape flex, and then just test it out your little square with, with the staples in your sewing ma machine to see how everything's working out for you before trying it on an actual bag. But I didn't have a problem with um, my stitches or the feed dogs or anything getting caught up because of the staples. Pat says, I would like to make a utility tote using the Oslo craft bag pattern. I will need to make it longer and remove the interior divider. Will this weaken the bag? Um, so the divider is helpful for uh, keeping the bag shape, and by that I mean um, it's kind of like a rectangular bag. Again, I don't have one handy in the sewing machine to grab and show you, but the divider kind of helps it keep its rectangular shape um, as far as not um, collapsing on the sides toward the middle. I haven't made one without that interior divider, but I, I know a lot of people in the Facebook group have. Um, let's see. Perhaps, since you mentioned a utility tote, perhaps a false bottom might be good in that one, especially if you're not using the interior divider. And if you haven't made a false bottom before, I have a free video on my YouTube channel and you can just go ahead and um, click over to our channel and in the search box, type in false bottom and that should take you over to the video. And like I mentioned before, when I was talking about the coalition bag, the corrugated plastic is really nice to use for false bottoms. Doreen says, I have a basting gun. Wonder if that would work like a stapler. Um, to be honest, I'm, I'm not sure that it won't work. I, I don't have a basting gun, but uh, I'm super curious about it. So I'm gonna write that down so that I could check that out after the show. All right. Uh, Carla says, I just bought the Singer Expert Finish Iron and love it. Thanks for the advice. Uh, question, when it heats up, I get a bit of pop noise. Do you get this as well from your Singer Iron? So this is, 
got it over here. So this is the iron that I use. I purchased this iron in 2013, so it's still hanging and tough for me. I fill the tank with water all the time. I've never had any leakage, and I do, not every time I use it or not every day, but I do occasionally hear a little a little pop like what you mentioned. I've not noticed that the, the popping noise has called, caused anything to happen with the iron, and the, the iron is still functioning just like it was when I first got it. As you can see, the plate looks nice and clean. I've been pretty uh, pretty good with m being careful with my interfacings, but uh, yeah, sorry, I'm not sure what the popping noise means, but my, my iron's holding up well since it's been here since 2013. Brandy says, I glue a lot, but the staples would be good to not have to worry about the glue drying. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, that glue, because I use the, the fabric glue for gluing in purse frames and things like that, it kind of uh, hampers your style when you have to wait for that glue to dry 30 minutes or an hour or what have you. Rita says, I have also found that Elmer School Glue has become my best friend. I use it so much. Uh, yeah, glue, especially washable glue like Elmer's is great to use for all sorts of things. I know people use it for applique, paper piecing, and it's fantastic to have in the sewing room. Glue or glue sticks. Denny says, what have you found that is the best straps for a duffel bag that can be washed? Um, quilting cotton is great for duffel bags. I don't have my duffel size coalition in the sewing room, but I've got a handbag sized over here, and this is just quilting cotton straps. Um, if you are using uh, other materials on your strap, such as cork. Um, materials like that can be just wiped clean with a damp cloth. Um, yeah, I, don't, I have put bags in the so, uh, washing machine in the past, but I tend to like to wipe them down if possible, just so things don't get uh, wrangled around in the, the sewing machine or in the dryer, because I've put bags in the dryer in the past as well. Um, Yvonne says, did you go out in the snow for Halloween? So we did have, the day before Halloween and the day of Halloween in Chicago, we had snow. On Halloween, we did have, uh, I'd say, not quite a lot of snow, but a good amount of snow. And it was windy, really windy and really cold. So we did not go trick-or-treating. Uh, we took the kids to a friend's house and we had sort of a party. The kids played together and we had pizza and stuff. So we did that instead. Um, they didn't seem to mind it at all, and we had some candy at the party as well. So they're fine. Um, I admit they don't have the huge gigantic bags of candy that we normally have, but I'm okay with that because uh, it's less candy in the house. Joanne says, do you purchase most of your fabrics online or in a local shop? If it's a local shop, would you share the name? So I live in Chicago. Um, a few local shops that I enjoy are Quilter's Destination, which is in Arlington Heights. Um, in Chicago, we have Second City Quilting and Oak Fabrics. Another shop that I like from the suburbs is Thimbles, which is in Lockport. Um, for all of you that don't live in the Chicago area, some of my favorite online shops are Hawthorne Supply Company, Stash Fabrics, uh, what else? Etsy's great if you're looking, especially if you're looking for something that's out of print or hard to find. Um, Fat Quarter Shop, so those are all great online shops, and I do, I probably, I probably order maybe 80% of the fabrics that I buy online and the rest in person. Pat says, any chance on getting templates for the Oslo bag? Um, that's a great idea. I, I've never thought of that. I'm going to write that on my list. Thank you, Pat. Oslo templates. Karen says, hi, Sarah and Danny. Can you please design a sewing machine carrying case? Um, I should mention, although my sewing machine doesn't fit into it, I've seen many people in the past use the airplane bag, the either the regular or the long, I guess depending on your sewing machine, for a bag to take their sewing machines to either classes or retreats. Um, I know the Berninas or featherweights or smaller machines will fit in the regular. Um, some slightly longer machines will fit in the long. My, my sewing machine, I use a Juki TL2010Q. It does not fit in either of the airplane bag versions, but I think that's an interesting idea, and I will... Hmm, I am working on a bag that I think it might fit. I'm working on a pattern for January just because I, I work that far out ahead, and I think it might fit in that particular bag. I don't know. I'll have to try that out when I finish the bag. Casey says, uh, what the heck is a basting gun, Doreen? Danny, do you know what a basting gun is? Okay. I wrote it on my list, so I'm going to check that out after the show. 
Sounds very interesting. I love new tools, especially in the sewing room. Shannon says, do you ever fuse interfacing to cork? So that's a great question. Um, I don't often have the need to fuse interfacings to cork just because I use uh, sew and foam interfacing and generally I'm using the cork on the outside of the bag. However, if you're careful, especially care being careful not to let the iron touch the right side of the cork, it is possible to fuse interfacings on the wrong side of the cork. Um, I'm pretty sure I did that when I made an airplane bag with the bottom panel being of cork and that bottom panel had some Peltex on it. Um, again, like I just mentioned, just be careful that the iron doesn't touch the right side of the fabric, but it's okay, especially if you folded your cork and you need to get out the wrinkles. It's okay to be gentle with your iron on the wrong side of the cork. Brenda says, when I use Elmer's glue, I iron it dry. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I do that with glue sticks and English paper piecing. I use the iron to kind of set the glue, and that's a great tip about having that uh, glue dried a lot faster with the use of your iron. Doreen says, um, Christine, it's a little gun that shoots out little plastic thingies, kind of like the plastic things that hold a price tag on an item. Oh, I know what that is now. Um, when I was in high school, I worked retail in like a clothing store, so I know exactly what that is. Interesting. Um, shout out to Maria Peters uh, Schilke for organizing the best so sweetness sewing weekend in Wisconsin. It was fabulous. Um, I didn't yet see if there were pictures posted from that. So Danny says yes. Okay. I saw some pictures during the day today, but I, I'll have to check after the show to see that particular one. Uh, I heard it was going to be great. Um, I talked uh, with her about that beforehand, so I'll have to check out that picture after the show. Arlene said, Sarah, what's the best sewing machines for multi-layer sewing? So I actually have a video that we shot last year about my sewing machine. It's on the YouTube channel and you can just do a search on my channel for uh, my sewing machine. And we did a video on the machine, uh, sewing different uh, layers together, different layers of cork with interfacing. I stacked a whole bunch of layers and put it through the sewing machine. So I showed all the features of the machine as well as what it can handle in that particular video. So check that one out. All right, Danny's calling it on the questions. So I apologize if I did not get to your question live, but we'll be back on next Sunday answering more questions, or at least I'll be answering more questions. Uh, so let's get over to tonight's giveaway. So the giveaway tonight is for two items. I wanted to give away, just because we got a bunch more of these in stock, the Easy Point and Turner, which I demonstrated on a previous Social Sunday show. So in case you missed that, you can click the link in the description for the Easy Point and Turner and it'll take you to the video that we made. This tool, um, uh, this tool serves a whole different array of functions for not only turning bag straps, but for um, inserting elastics, uh, strapping into your bag straps, all sorts of different things. So it's really handy. Make sure you check that video out in case you missed it. And also a half yard roll of rainbow splatter cork fabric. So both of these prizes will be included. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is enter your answer either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching this video. What do you decorate the walls of your sewing area with? So all you have to do is answer the question. I'll be choosing one randomly drawn winner and announcing it on next Sunday's show. So my sewing room currently has pictures of horses, uh, bearded dragons, and uh, me and Violet Williams missing from a picture in the sewing room. So I've just got a bunch of pictures in the sewing room right now. I would like to decorate it with a bunch of mini quilts like I showed you from that book, uh, quilted wall hanging. So maybe I can get on that soon. Uh, kind of running out of wall space in here because we have so much fabric covering the walls back here. So thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I hope you enjoyed the show. I had a lot of fun. Uh, preparing the demonstration and talking about the different projects. I'll see you again next Sunday. Uh, don't forget my mom and dad will be joining me for the show. Hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everybody.